Test easy. And so what do we get now in Barack Obama? Well, I've got videos, by the way. This election, we're going to vet him. I've got videos. This election, we're going to vet him from his college days to show you. Always the provocateur, always the tease, always the agitator, always in your face. Say what you will of one Andrew Breitbart. Always interesting, never dull. And now gone, the fiery 43-year-old conservative internet publisher whose words shocked the world, shockingly leaving this world by, of all things, natural causes. It doesn't make sense. Then again, Breitbart's rapid rise to media stardom didn't make much sense either. Disheveled, disorganized, always seemingly distracted. Breitbart didn't really look the part of the angry conservative, but man, oh man, no one was quicker to come to the defense of conservatives. I think that the average American out there is looking at Sarah Palin as an X factor, somebody who is treated poorly by the press, somebody who is treated poorly by the supposed smart people in Washington that got us into this mess in the first place. She doesn't understand how the media works, and just this weekend her family was attacked. Bristol Palin was attacked. She needs to start defending her family. Andrew Breitbart did not fight liberal fire with fire. He went nuclear on them. And when it came to a certain Democratic congressman, once blaming the media for making up what he called outrageous stories on him, the bomb thrower proved that he knew how to throw back, too. He didn't want to have to take responsibility for the fact that for 10 days his campaign was to use the organized left, including Salon.com, the Huffington Post, and the Media Matters, and the Daily Cost, and all these, all these websites that blamed me for falsehoods, such as that I was the hacker. Well, do you uh, want a I, personal I, apology from him that didn't lump you in with all the other women who got dragged no, into these well, tweets I, or whatever? I, I, no, I, it's less about an apology than some some type of a, uh, culpability, some type of a, there needs to be ramifications for, you know, spreading those type of falsehoods. I mean, it, you know, it, it had damage. I mean, he was, he was trying to destroy me. Uh, he was trying to destroy my livelihood uh, in order to save his own. And, I, you know, uh, it's pretty excruciating to have a national media circus focus on you and, 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 and nobody is challenging that narrative. Nobody goes back to Salon and says, hey, wait a second, wait a Breitbart's, second. The guy, Breitbart's the guy that checked out the girl's name from Seattle. Now, I didn't know Andrew, like uh, my friend Tucker Carlson, hadn't followed his every missive like my buddy Sean Hannity. But what I gleaned from my own chats is that Andrew did not chat, he, he, he erupted. But with an articulation, an edge, and even humor that few on the right or the left could match. He was, as they say, good TV and a good man driven by what he forever called a good cause, the right cause. And one Andrew repeatedly said was worth that fight, even if it meant getting right in occupiers' faces. There was one of him, about a thousand of them. So let them try and attack me, Breitbart once told me. I'd be disappointed if they did not. Then I know I was failing. Now I know I'm not. Clearly not. Not even close. Andrew Breitbart, dead at age 43. Just a goofball from Los Angeles who wears goofy shoes. We knew that you couldn't balance budgets by spending trillions of dollars on ungodly crap. They always think that their sarcasm is going to, like, catch me off guard. They're a bunch of totalitarian freaks. Oh, it worked. Okay. But what it do you worked. Think? What do you I'm think? asking you. Coward. You're a I'm coward. asking you. You're I'm asking coward. you. In college, I read a lot of post-structuralist Marxist gobbledygook. Thank God I was drunk and it didn't take. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks with your glitter bombs. Bring it on. Bring on the glitter. 